Alrighty. Well, since we've passed through the cards and got them signed, let's go ahead and start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this day. We thank you for the, the safe travel of everyone who, who made it here to class. Uh, bless us as uh, we study your word together, uh, that by our conversation and study, our faith in you would be strengthened. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. So, back in Acts. It's been a little little while since, <laughs> since we, we've been here. Um, so we are in Acts chapter 19. I believe we left off at verse 11. Okay. So Paul has come back in, he's, he's there in, in Ephesus, um, and he, he met some people um, who basically had, had received John's baptism, um, but they didn't know about the Holy Spirit. They had, you know, they they were kind of, I don't know if it's the right term, but kind of primitive in their in, in their Christianity, if you will. Um, and so John uh, or Paul rather, uh, he teaches them about the Holy Spirit. He baptizes them um, in the name of Jesus. Um, you know, the the now Christian baptism, um, and they receive the Holy Spirit and. Um, from that. So, um, kind of an interesting passage there. Um, and he continues his ministry there. And then in verse 11, um, we get this really kind of strange uh, encounter with, um, with, with these uh, Jewish exorcists. <laughs> um, so we'll, 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 we'll kind of read about them and, and, and see this really strange, um, account that we have here. Uh, so if someone could read as uh, Acts chapter 19 verses, we'll, we'll split it in half here. So if someone could read verses 11 through 15. Okay. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs <coughs> and aprons <coughs> that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of... <coughs> excuse me. Seven sons of... Sceva. Sceva. A Jewish uh, chief Acts priest, 19. We're doing this. One day the evil spirit answered <coughs> them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? All right, let's go ahead and pause there. Um, so, yeah, so, so God's doing extraordinary miracles, you know, by the hands of Paul, right? So God is the one who is acting, uh, but he's working through Paul. Um, so, you know, a lot, we've, we've seen this a number of times where Paul or Peter or one of the apostles will do a miracle. Uh, and the, the people around will start to even worship them and, and make sacrifice to them to say, wow, you are amazing, you know, Paul or whoever it is. And, and the apostles are always quick to say, it's not me, it's the Lord, right? God is the one who, who has done this. And so, so we see that again emphasized here, that God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. And we get uh, in verse 12 here, right? It talks about how even the, the, the handkerchiefs and, uh, and aprons that, that touched his skin were carried away to the sick. And everyone who, who touched, even those things that had, had touched Paul, um, that they were then healed. It kind of draws us back to, um, to Jesus, of course, um, with the, the healing of the, the, the woman who had been bleeding for, you know, for over a decade she'd been bleeding for years and she she goes and and she touched just the the hem of jesus's cloak right um and and she's healed just by by touching his his garment um and, and so we we kind of see a reflection of that here that the same a similar thing is happening with paul um it just shows you how much the the holy spirit is working through paul and and, and god using him 
um, that their diseases left them and evil spirits came out of them. Uh, so, you know, even those possessed by demons, right, that they're, you know, touching the, the, the handkerchief of Paul and, and the spirit has to leave. Um, amazing, the power of God. Um, and so, right, so word, of course, is getting out a, a, about this. And then we get introduced to some, um, these, these Jewish uh, exorcists, as, as the ESV has it, um, that they're itinerant Jewish exorcists. So they're, they're, they're Jewish people who, are, who travel around, and it's basically their job, um, calling, or you know, however you want to put it, to, to go and, and cast out demons um, of people who are oppressed by demons. Uh, which shows you that you know demon possession at this time and in this you know in this region um, was much more prevalent at least you know um, at least in a way that people could see uh, much more prevalent than what we see you know in our society now um, we we don't see a whole lot of people you know possessed by demons and and, and going around we kind of don't believe it. Yeah, sometimes you know, I there was a pastor who uh, who had a you know a deep background in psychology and that kind of stuff, and and he said that he thinks a lot of the um, the mental illnesses and 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 things that we see like schizophrenia and and stuff like that sometimes could have demonic possession roots. Um, you know, he says, of course, there's no way to prove that in the scientific world, right? And if you would say that in a, you know, a psychological setting or anything, you'd be laughed out of the room. Um, but, you know, it's possible that, you know, that there is kind of that spiritual warfare going on um, within the, the psychological realm. Um, um, we, we, we do see um, <coughs> a demon possession happening more over in um, there's been lots of accounts over in Africa of, uh, you know, of people being possessed by, by demons and that kind of thing. Um, and one explanation I heard for that was that, you know, Satan has a lot of tricks up his sleeve to, to you know, draw people away from God. Um, and and it, it was, this, this guy argued that, that if Satan would have his, de- you know, do demon possession a lot here, here in America, that it wouldn't really serve his benefit um, because there's a lot of people in America who kind of just, you know, deny the spiritual, you know, kind of atheistic. Um, and so to, to have a bunch of people being possessed by demons would almost alert them to, hey, there is a spiritual reality. Um, and then they'd get to start thinking about those things. And so that he, instead in America, he works more in, you know, materialism and greed and pride and, you know, these other th- sins um, that, that he uses to, to draw away. Whereas in other societies where they're already, you know, very sp- spiritual, aware of spiritual realities, um, that Satan will, will send his demons to try and possess people, to try and show the power of, of the demons to say, you know, don't follow Christ because, you know, look at the power that these demons have over, over people. And um, so it's very interesting to kind of, you know, see how, how, how things work in different regions and stuff. But, um, but yeah, demon possession is very real. Um, we just don't see it nearly as much as the apostles yeah. did or, or, yeah, or people elsewhere. <laughs> that's very possible too yeah if we saw it yeah we would try and explain it away and yes I think we would yeah I mean we're such an uh, uh, elite organi- uh, country here that we would just uh, you know there's nothing that bad in our country right yeah yeah we're almost above it kind yeah. of kind of a thing yeah we just wouldn't let that happen well, but I'll tell you though if anybody <coughs> notice this I mean all of us except you are the same age. Oh, I mean, no, some... I'm older than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to fight about this, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, remember when we were kids, when, when, when you saw Disney advertised, it was beautiful stuff and everything? Now, like, rah, 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 rah. I mean, that's... Does anybody notice that? I mean, mm-hmm. it's stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. Watch this. well, but the, when they do the fairy tales, they were always bad, though. They always had a bad guy in a, in a fairy tale. That's what they usually do. 
It just seems like but it's... Look at the movies that are... The, the movies other that are movies. the movie theater. Yeah, the other it's movies. It's all yeah. shooting yeah. and yeah. Yeah. out but of this world. I don't think it always saves mm-hmm. me, but I'll bet you the rest of them are. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me- media and entertainment, you know. Yeah, even yeah, into yeah, Disney, Disney is, 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 yeah, it's... A far cry from what it, <laughs> what it used to be. Yeah, well, e- even even just within my lifetime. So right, you, you know, you guys right see that even more. Um, but yeah, just the yeah. Well, our parents wouldn't have let us watch stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not. We're well, not watching that. We didn't have TVs when I was a kid either. Well, we had radio TV, was a wonder. Uh, we had the Lone Ranger and yeah, yeah. Andy, uh, Andy, uh, Andy Murray. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even you know they have the ratings for things, right? You know, movies and shows yes, and uh, yeah. but right, you, yeah. Even nowadays, right? If something's like oh PG, right? We still have to kind of filter it and be like, okay, yes. well, what yes, we do. <laughs> what do you consider PG? Because right. you yes, know, because it's probably right. different than what yeah. than what we do. So. Yeah, yeah, right. It's Satan works in all kinds of ways, and media and entertainment is is certainly one of those that. And you you see those advertisements and you think, I wouldn't even want to sit and watch that. No, I absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Yeah, sad to see. And I I just think part of it too, the problem nowadays is that the family life is not there. Yeah. Yeah, mom and dad are I both mean, probably working. We sat down and had supper together. Yeah. No matter what, it was a you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, if you have one meal a week together, you're lucky. This one's going mm-hmm. here. This one's going yeah. here. And yeah. That family life isn't there. And there's two cars, and mom has one if she's not working, <coughs> and she can take the kids wherever. To otherwise, a bus did go down my street every once in a while. <laughs> when I built, was growing up. <laughs> Yeah, and that and that's even with the families that are blessed to have both parents present, right? So yes. so many families don't ha- you know that that the father left or you know or you know or incarcerated. <laughs> yeah, 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 and so yeah, the 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 destruction of the the family is is a is a yeah, it's it's a it's a core for so many problems in our society. Um, yes, everyone. You can think of every thing in the society that's not good is probably yeah got that core. Yeah, it's, for sure. It's hard to it's hard to rationalize with, with young kids. Little little Johnny down in Chicago. His mother tells him stay in school and get a good job and you'll make a lot of money. He says, hey, I can go on the street corner right now. Yeah. And be a lookout for the drug dealer yes. and make more money than that. It's hard to mm-hmm. counter that as a parent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe they don't care to. You tell yeah. Sometimes, you tell, yeah. You, 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 you tell a kid money's important. Yeah. <coughs> but you know, you want to emphasize, but but don't get it this way. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a it's a tough, broken, sinful world that we live in. Yeah, it's um, worse. And it and it yeah, it doesn't take much looking to see the. The sinful nature in, in in humanity. So yeah, so we, so we saw it right, and you know that that sinful nature was back in the time of the the Acts of the Apostles as well, and uh, you know so these Jewish exorcists right, they're going around trying to you know cast out all these demons, um, and and so they they see that that Paul is having success in casting out demons in the name of Jesus, right? This is, this is how he does all of his miracles, right? He, it's, it's always in the name of Jesus. It's by his authority. And so these, these Jewish exorcists we see here, um, they, 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 they almost think that it's a magical formula, right? That if you say, in the name of Jesus, you know, go c- cast out, get out of here, demon, that the demon has to listen to you because you said, in the name of Jesus. Um, right, and, and we, we, you know, <laughs> we, we see this example kind of a lot, and, um, you know, people, when, it, when Jesus talks about, you know, when you, when you pray in something in my name, you know, I, I will grant it. Um, and so people sometimes will, will think, oh, well, if I just tack 
in the name of Jesus on the end of my prayer, <laughs> then, you know, Lord, please give me a Ferrari in right. the name of Jesus. Yes, right. Amen. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, well, I, I prayed in Jesus' name. Yeah, and, and, and I didn't get my Ferrari. And, oh, yeah, yeah, happened. yeah, that's right. Scripture is bogus, right? No. <laughs> well, that could be. Some, sometimes people think that. That could be. Um, but, right, so they, I, I forget what movie I saw. Um, and, and not to say that, right, you know, that it w doesn't work, but I for I'm trying to remember. It was, it was a Christian movie. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, oh, it was War Room. Have any of you seen War Room, no. the movie? Okay, good. Then I won't hurt any feelings. Um, <laughs> it's not the best movie, um, but it, it is interesting to kind of walk through and, and look at it theologically. But there's one scene where, uh, where this, this lady... Um, this this older lady is kind of you know mentoring this younger lady who's having marital problems and she's saying well you just need to pray more and that kind of stuff and and so they're walking out to their car and this this robber comes up and and pulls out a knife and is is you know gonna rob them and so you know give me your purses give me all your money kind of stuff and this older lady walks up to him and says in the name of Jesus you go away from us and and the guy kind of like pauses for a second and then just runs away <laughs> and 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 so she attributes that of course to you know well i i prayed in jesus name and mm -hmm. and so he he had to run away and it's like I, that's not quite how that works <laughs> um but so do, don't try that yeah yeah what what yeah whether whether he ran away because it was the act of god or that he was like i don't know what this lady's thinking but <laughs> i'm yeah, gonna yeah, i don't want to mess with that. it yeah, yeah so 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 yeah. don't don't go try that you know just be safe but <laughs> um but these these jewish exorcists right they they see paul have success and so they start to use Jesus's name to try and cast out these these evil spirits all right I and, and notice you know here in the ESV it says I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims <laughs> you know to, to be cast out right so this is not them believing in Jesus right this isn't them saying you know to... out of my faith in Jesus be be gone uh, but rather it's the Jesus whom Paul is preaching, right? By his name, get out, right? So it, it's, it is just that formula, you know, in the name of Jesus kind of thing. Um, and and the, the spirit answers them, the evil spirit. Um, he, he answers them, you know, Jesus I know, right? He, he knows, you know, the, the demon knows who Jesus is. And Paul I recognize, right? He's, he's heard about Paul. He knows about, you know, Paul. Uh, but who are you? Right, <laughs> you know, I know Jesus, I recognize Paul, but but who are you supposed to be? Right, you know, the the demon does not know them or, or think their work any significance at all. Um, so you're right, he's you know not phased by by them, um, and certainly not under any power to to obey them. Um, and so then we, we see the, the rest of this. So if someone could read verses 16 through 20. And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of, the, out of that house naked and wounded. And this become known to the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks. And fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also many of those who were now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices. And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. Yeah, so these so these Jewish exorcists, right? They they call on Jesus' name, who's Paul, whom Paul is preaching about, to to cast out this demon. This demon basically says, "I I don't even know who you are, and and why you think you can stop me." And and the the demon that you know, then of course possessing this man, um, you know, masters all of them, right? You know, d defeats them all. Um, so that they, they fled out of the house naked and wounded, 
right, that this demon completely humiliates them, um, showing that they have no power in and of themselves, you know, over the demon. Um, <coughs> and so, right, that this, this event then became known to, to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, so, right, people heard about this. Um, and we see that, that it's e- either from this or from Paul going around and preaching about Christ and, and the miracles that happened, you know, we, we then hear that, you know, fear fell upon all of them and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Um, the, the study note here um, says that the residents of Eph- Ephesus recognized the great power of Jesus' name. Uh, from Paul's lips, Jesus' name worked miracles, uh, but used by the Jewish exorcist, his name brought a demonic attack. Um, and so, I, you know, it's kind of a stretch, I think, to, to say that they would necessarily associate them using Jesus' name to cause the demonic attack. Um, but I think that they, you know, can see that, you know, Maybe you shouldn't, you know, misuse the name of the Lord your God, right? If you, if you misuse Jesus' name, which is what these, you know, Jews were doing, you know, they were breaking that second commandment of misusing the name of the Lord your God. Um, but, but there's, there's this um, recognition from those in Ephesus that, you know, that Jesus is great and, his, you know, his name is great. Um, and the spirit didn't have its own body either. <coughs> The, the evil spirit? Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah, the, had, the spirit it, had to... Had to find some host mm-hmm. in order to do his dirty work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or at least, yeah, in this case, yeah, had to, you know, possess this man in order right. to physically kind of a- attack and mm-hmm. do things. Um, yeah, and so... But what we see, kind of the result of, of this and, and, and Paul's preaching and, his, and the miracles that, that God worked through him, right? We see many now believed, right? They, they confessed in him. And these aren't necessarily just, you know, faithful Jews who are now becoming Christian, right? But we see that these people who are believing are, you know, practicers of magic and, you know, the, these types of things, um, you know, con- verse 18, right? And also many of those who were now believers came confessing faith in, in Christ and divulging their practices. And this, it, this would have been their, you know, their magic practices, the dark arts kind of thing. Um, and, and it says, you know, verse 19 continued, and a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, right? This is kind of an act of repentance, that you know i it's sinful to for me to have practiced these kinds of things um and to believe that you know this is how things should be and so in in repentance to say i don't believe this stuff anymore and i don't want to do this stuff anymore i'm going to burn all of my materials that i would use for it um books and you know everything they would have um you know, stuff of incantations and and all of that. Um, And it's not a small amount (laughs) of worth uh, that that all these things, right? They counted the value of them and found that it came to 50,000 pieces of silver, um, which which would have been a lot. Um, Yeah, so right, the the study note here um, says a piece of silver was the daily wage for a common worker. Right, so, okay. so we're talking, you know, 50,000 days wages <laughs> yeah. um, worth of stuff that, that they, because of their faith in Christ, they are willing to throw away, right? That, that you know, they, they go all in in following Christ. They don't say, oh, well, we want to believe in Christ, but at least let me sell off my, <laughs> my books so I can get, you know, proper value out of them. They see, no, this stuff is evil. Right, it's demonic, and so we're just going to get rid of it, even if it means losing, you know, all of this money that we could have. Um, we we are going to destroy them, um, and they do. Uh, and so, the, and we get the note here in verse twenty, right? So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily, right? That that even though you know 
people are being possessed by demons, even though Jews are, you know, constantly fighting against the church and, you know, and, and there's that persecution, right? The word of the Lord is still going out, you know, even in chapter 19 of Acts, um, you know, the, the word of the Lord is still going out. People are still believing and God is prevailing mightily, right? It's, and it's not even just a little bit, right? But mightily he, he is prevailing, um, and so, again, right, the, the power of, of the Lord um, through his word. So a really interesting account. Any, any questions on this one? All right, well, let's keep going. <coughs> All right, so now uh, we get some more events here at Ephesus. Uh, so if someone could read verses 21 through 27. I can't see that. Okay. I can, I'll read it. 20, 21 through 27. 21 through 27, yeah. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. Achaia. Mm -hmm. after, after I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia, while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. About that time, there arose a great disturbance about the way a silversmith named Demetrius, who made silver shrines of Art Artemis, brought in no little business for the craftsmen. He called them together, along with the workmen in related tra trades, and said, Men, you know we receive a good income from this business. And you see and hear how this fellow, Paul, has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus, and in, and in particularly the whole province of Asia. He says that man-made gods are no gods at all. There is danger not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be dis discredited yeah. and goddess herself, Again. who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world will be robbed of her divine majesty. Wow. Oh. <laughs> All right. That re that's what was put through that mm -hmm. one, right? Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, absolutely. Mine says Diana. Oh, instead of Artemis? Yes, and her... Magnificence should be destroyed among all Asia and the world worship. Worship it. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> uh, and so, yeah. Um, so here, right, Paul says, all right, I have decided I'm going back to Jerusalem. Um, and so, of course, the path he's going to take is through uh, Macedonia and Achaia uh, to get to Jerusalem. And so he says, I'm going to go there, and after I go to Jerusalem, I must go to Rome. Right? He, he wants to go to Rome to, to proclaim God's word there. Um, and so that's his plan. So, yeah. so, so he, he you know, sends Timothy and Erastus into uh, Macedonia, two of his helpers, uh, Timothy being the same Timothy that he writes First and Second Timothy 2, um, a young, young pastor that he's training. Um, so he sends them, and he stays in, in Asia for a while. Um, and, you know, Asia, and, you know, in this time, right, Asia is more like Turkey, right, area, Asia Minor, as we kind of think of it. So right. so not over in China, in China or that kind of Japan stuff. And yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, so, so while, while he's there um, in, in that region, right, there's... <laughs> There's a, a big disturbance, right? Yeah, no um, yeah, yeah, ESV yeah, has has arose no little disturbance, right? There's that no that small. light to tease, yeah, um, concerning the way, which of course is is the name of of the church at that time, um, and and we see that kind of at the center of this. Um, there's this Demetrius who's a silversmith, and he, he makes shrines of Artemis or Diana, however you want to. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd have to look at the, the manuscripts on that one. Um, but, um, 
and 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 yeah and right and he brought no no little business no small business uh, to the craftsman right now so he's so he's business. he's making a lot of money yes. uh, from making these these shrines uh, of Artemis and Artemis is a um, is is a, a goddess of fertility so so this was you know a, a goddess that people would pray to you know in order to to be fertile, right? For, you know, women to have, you know, sons or children and um, these kinds of things. Uh, also at the temple itself, um, at, at a lot of these, you know, these fertility temples, um, there, there would have been uh, temple prostitutes that men could go and, and sleep with. And, um, and it was, you know, encouraged that then they would be blessed, you know, if they went and engaged in this, in this living. Um, and, and so, so man made that one up. yeah, man, man, <laughs> man I, I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. Um, <laughs> and so, so right. This Demetrius, he's hearing the preaching of Paul. Uh, and of course, Paul is saying, you know, gods and idols made by men are nothing. Right. And so, you know, probably a direct attack against, you know, this, the practice of his, you know, to, to you know, oh, I'm making these, these shrines to Artemis that they would pray to and worship. And St. Paul, who is gaining a very big following and influence in this region, is saying, those are nothing, they're, right? They're, they're just statues. Um, it's worthless. And, and so, so he gathers all of, all of the, the, the workmen together um, in similar trades, right? People who, you know, would would know him and he would know them and, and they would have influence uh, together right he basically says right you've you've heard of what paul is saying right he's he's telling people and and that paul has persuaded uh, people to turn away from worshiping artemis um, and so when they stop worshiping artemis they're also going to stop buying the shrines that we're making and so he says right that there's a danger in this of course um and he says not, you know, the, the first thing he lists is danger to our trade, right? The, the, the less people that worship Artemis, the smaller business that they have. And so they won't be able to make all the money that, that we're used to. So that's not a good thing. Uh, but that's not the only thing he lists, right? He also says, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing and that she may even be deposed from her magnificence she whom all Asia and the world worship. So right, so not only would this is is Paul's preaching bad for business, uh, <laughs> but it also right we we see that that the, you know the, this guy Demetrius he went in making the shrines. He's not just doing it as a scam, right? He's not saying yeah I know that Artemis isn't really a god or a goddess. Um, but all these other suckers do, and so I'm gonna, you know, you <laughs> take know, advantage take them. advantage of them, make some money off of them, right? He genuinely believes in Artemis, that that Artemis is this goddess uh, worthy of worship, um, and so you know, he says that if Paul continues to preach this, then she will not be getting the worship that she deserves, mm -hmm. and her magnificence will be brought to nothing, right? And so it, it shows, I think, and, and we'll, we'll see this kind of continue um, as, again, we'll see a riot and, you know, <laughs> where, where Paul goes, problems follow. But, um, but what, we, what we see here is, you know, the, the struggle that, and, and, I, and I don't think that Demetrius comes to faith. Um, I, I forget. I don't think he does. Um, but but we see here kind of the the internal struggle that some people who who are who don't believe in Christ and believe in other false gods, what they have to go through in order to hear the gospel message, right? Because in order to you know for for someone who who fully believes in Artemis that Artemis is this great goddess who who worships and you know blesses my life, in order to get to Paul's side of thinking that where Paul is saying there is no God but Yahweh, the, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that Jesus died on the cross to save you from sins and all other false gods are nothing. 
you have to take everything that you've believed, everything that you've thought to be true about Artemis, about God, and say, I was wrong, right? I, for, for however many years I believed in Artemis, I was wrong to believe that. It was all lies. And that's a hard thing to do, right? It, it's hard to admit, you know, it's hard to admit you're wrong in anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, even, even just small things, let alone something that you've spent years of your life, maybe even your whole life, believing to be true. And so, so you know, this is, this is one of the hard things with, with Christianity and spreading the gospel is that, you know, we go and, you know, when, when we tell, you know, it seems easy to us, right? We, we go and, and tell people, oh, yeah, right, you know, Jesus died for your sins. Isn't that wonderful? You know, he, he's the one true God who, who died on the cross to save you from your sins. Um, but what people can hear in that is, you know, I've been believing something totally different my entire life. Um, I've never thought of myself as a sinner. I, you know, I, I think I've been living a pretty good life. And now you're telling me that I'm a poor, miserable sinner who is, you know, without Christ is worthy to go to hell you know, for all eternity. Um, and then, and that there's nothing that I can do to save myself, right? I have to place my trust in this Jesus, um, that he does all the work for me. And I, you know, I don't contribute much to that. Uh, and so it, it can be a very difficult thing for people. It's a complete worldview shift. Um, and for some people, it's, it's too great of a thing to overcome. They say, I would rather just stay where I'm at. I'd rather stay in my comfort zone, stay, you know, as, as, you know, John talks about in his gospel, right? You know, they would rather stay in the darkness, that this, this is what I know, and I would rather stay in that darkness because that's where I'm comfortable. But when Christ comes, he shines the light, and that light reveals people's sins. It reveals truths that you thought were true your whole life to be false and, and you know, vacuous of any real value or worth. Um, and so it can be very difficult. And so I, I think that's what we see here with Demetrius is that not only is it going to hurt his business, which, you know, of course, <laughs> he, val he values as a businessman, uh, but, but it's, it's an attack against the very thing he believes to be true, right? Against the, the goddess that he worships. Um, and that, that can be a hard thing to overcome. Um, but the Holy Spirit is greater than any of those things. And so, so many do turn from those things and say, yeah, I will turn from Artemis and I will believe in Jesus. Some won't, unfortunately. Um, but but we, we see that, that struggle there, I think, with, with Demetrius, that he, he sees what, become, what believing in Paul's words practically would mean for, for, for how he lives and what he believes. So Don't turn everything around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, completely changes life, right? Because because e even if you know, even if it wouldn't hurt his business, right? If he if he were to believe in Paul's words, then to to show his true belief, he would need to stop making idols and shrines of Artemis, which would mean no more business, no more money. Now he would have to find another means to earn a living. Well, another god to to make ar uh, articles of <coughs> with or about something. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, and, and it, it couldn't, yeah, it couldn't be any, you know, shrines of, of yeah. false gods. And, yeah. and we, we don't see those, at least in the early church, right? Yeah. There wasn't the practice of, you know, yes. making any kind of shrines or Christian art or anything, mm -hmm. you know. So, so yeah, it'd be a total shift for this Christian guy. Art. Yeah. That's obvious there. Mm -hmm. Since it was no. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, right. So, he, he sees the, the, the problem here. We all do. Um, I mean, with poor, poor guy, he's not going to be able to eat. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. He's going to have to do something else. Yeah. So then we, we get the, um, the re response here after uh, Demetrius' speech uh, in verse 28 and following. So if someone could read verses 28 through 34. When they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So the city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed together into the theater, dragging with them Gaius and 
Ericus, Ericus, Macedonians, and who were Paul's companions in travel. But when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let go, let him go, would not let him. And even some of the Ararax, who were friends of his, sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. Now some cried out one thing, some another, for for the assembly was was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward, and Alexander motioned with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. All right, so, yeah, so the people that, that Demetrius was, you know, speaking with, um, they, they reacted exactly how he hoped they would. Uh, they were enraged, right, and they, they, they cry out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians, right? They, they say, this is who we believe in. Or and Diana. and so and yeah or I Diana saying, yeah, yeah 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 I'm gonna keep saying right, we know. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying Artemis because that's what my translation says yeah yeah <laughs> and so so right they they cry out that this is who in whom we believe um, and so right this the city is filled with confusion they all rush together into the theater which was a, a center point of of the city. Um, and so they, they drag with them some of Paul's companions, um, Gaius and Aristarchus, um, uh, Macedonians, so people in that region, um, who, who were Paul's companions in travel. Um, so right there, they're bringing them together because they, you know, they, they, they want to have someone to, to yell at and be angry at. We've um, got to find more out about Gaius then, don't we? There's not a whole lot about <laughs> Gaius. Um, but what, what we do know is, right, we, we see he's, he's a traveling companion of Paul, at least here in, the, in Macedonia, you know, Ephesus. Um, we, we see, um, I believe it's at the end of Romans, um, that Gaius houses Paul in, in his travels at so one point. So he continues to kind of help Paul out. Mm-hmm. And then we hear, um, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians, um, where where people are are talking about um some people are saying oh well i follow paul and some people i i follow apollos and Mm -hmm. you know these these factions kind of form and 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 paul tells the people of corinth he says well for you know for your sake i'm glad that i didn't baptize any of you um because (laughs) um right i don't want you guys just following me well paul baptized me so i'm gonna follow him and he's like no follow christ Oh, um, okay. But in that, there's a little note that he says, but I do rejoice that I baptized um, um, Guy- Crispus and Gaius, are, are two people that, that he baptized. So, um, so, so Gaius is, is one of the few that, that Paul baptized. So <laughs> other, other than those things, we don't really know anything about Gaius. Um, the name itself means to rejoice. No, that's um, why you named your son that. Yeah, yeah. Biblical name, good meaning. Mm-hmm. Um, good meaning. So, yeah. So, right. So, so they're pulled together. And, right, it's interesting here, right? Paul wishes to go in the crowd, right? He no doubt sees his companions being taken and he sees all of this chaos. And, you know, Paul, as he has in many <laughs> other examples, wants to rush in and start proclaiming Christ and say, you know, let me give a defense to what I'm proclaiming. But this must have been a really chaotic scene uh, because. Right, the the disciples, the other people around, would not let him. Right, <laughs> just ima- I imagine them, you know, grabbing onto Paul. Paul's trying, you like, let me go, let me go, yeah. uh, and they're saying, no, we're not going to let you in there. Yeah. yeah, physically holding him back, and even some of the um, right ESV here has Asiarchs, Asia- um, oh. which were the. There's a little note here that says high-ranking officers in the province of Asia. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, so right, who were friends of his. Right, they they sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. Right, so even these these higher, you know, officials were were telling Paul, it is nuts in there. <laughs> Do not go in. Right, yeah. it, it will not serve your benefit at all. Um, 
and so so yeah so they every everybody is telling him don't don't go in paul please don't go in um some of the crowd it says right in verse 33 prompted alexander uh, whom the jews had put forward right so so this is one of the 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 christians there um, that's gathered together you know he he tries to to make a defense of what they're what paul's teaching what they are spreading of the gospel um but when they recognize that he was a jew uh, for about two hours they cry out with one voice great is artemis or diana of the ephesians um, for two hours, right? This is, this is like a, a filibuster, right? They, they just keep yelling and shouting so that, so that Alexander cannot make his case. And, and you can see kind of the, the chaos in this. Um, verse 32 is hilarious, right? Now, some cried out one thing, some another, right? So, every, you know, there's not a united voice. Everybody's saying different things. Um, you know, for the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together, right? <laughs> most they of them, just ju- they, they just, yeah, <laughs> they just said, hey, what's all this commotion yeah, going about? Out. And they just kind of got roped in. And so it's, it's just hilarious um, that, right, there, there's a few people who are, you know, stirring up the pot, and, and most of the people there are just like, why are we here? <laughs> Um, but they're there, so you know, and and you know, they're all shouting, and it's just a crazy scene, um, and and right, and we we see right, they're they're not even willing to hear out Alexander, right? They're not willing to hear out a defense of why why would you be proclaiming these things, right? And this is really the mind of of the unbeliever, right? That you know that that hardened heart that will not and does not want to hear anything about the word of God. We saw this with, um, with St. Stephen at, at the, the Jews, you know, he was proclaiming, you know, Christ to them. And, and you know, Luke records that, that they stopped their ears <laughs> so, that they, so that they couldn't hear the words of St. Stephen. They did not want to hear what he had to say. Mm-hmm. And then they go and, and stone him. And so the crowds here similarly you know, have that same mindset. They don't have any interest in what Alexander has to say. And so for two hours, they just shout out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Um, just, or just, right, um, I just imagine, you know, you know like, at, like at a sports game, you're in the arena and everybody's chanting, you know, yeah. in unison together. And, you know, if you wanted to say something different, it doesn't matter how loudly you would yell, no one would hear you. Um, and, and yeah, maybe. Yeah. And and so, right. This is, this is what Alexander is is experiencing. I think, um, that, yeah, that they are, they will not let him speak. And it's, it's a crazy scene. Any, any questions on, on any of this so far? (coughs) All right. Well, let's finish up the chapter here. Uh, if someone could read verses 35 through 41. And the city clerk quieted the crowd and said, Fellow Ephesians, don't all, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and her image, which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, even though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have done a grievance against anyone, anybody, the courts are open and there are pre-councils. Pre-councils? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, pro-councils. Mm-hmm. Then they can press charges. All, if there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. As it is, we are in danger of being charged and uh, charged with rioting because of what happened today. In that case, we would not be able to account for this commotion since there is no reason at all, no reason for it at all. After he had said this, he dismissed the assembly. All right, so the, the town clerk com- comes into the scene, and um, the, the study Bible here has a, a note on that. So the town clerk is the principal municipal officer of Ephesus. 
uh, whom the Roman government would hold responsible for civic disorder. Right, so he's, he's kind of the guy who, who deals with the, the crowds when they start to get out of hand. So, so he sees that, again, right, that this scene in the theater is getting out of hand. And so he steps in um, and he basically goes through this, this talk to kind of rationally get them to calm down. Um, no, no defense really of Paul or of the, the Christians, um, though he kind of spares their lives probably in, in doing this. But right, he, you know, he starts off by saying, you know, men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of, of the Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky? Seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rash. Um, so, right, pausing there, right? So, so this was the theory that this, this sacred stone of, of Artemis fell from the sky, landed in Ephesus, and so then they built this temple, and so there's this, you know, special place of, of worship there. Um, and so he basically says, right, you all know that this is true, right? These things can't be denied, which, of course, they can be, <laughs> um, but, but he says, right, we, we all know this to be true, and so why are you getting all upset about it? Right? If you know it to be true and, and you know that what this other person is proclaiming is false, then you don't, you don't need to get upset about it. Right? Don't, just, right? <laughs> don't be angry. All right? you've, you've brought these men here who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess, um, which directly they weren't. Right? So what, what we can gather from this is that the, the way that... Um, especially the men who were gathered there, right? Paul's not there, um, who, who probably is preaching a little bit more <laughs> forward on saying that idols are nothing. Um, but, right, the, these men gathered here, they, their preaching is not Artemis is a false god, right? Their preaching is Jesus is God, um, which, remember, in this, in this kind of Roman society, they had, you know, a whole pantheon of gods, Right, so so it was it was taken at least by Rome at first to say, okay, well Jesus right can fit very nicely in w- with our pantheon of gods, right? He's just one of many, right? So, so so you know at its you know on the face of it to say that Jesus is divine, that Jesus is God, does not directly say Artemis is not God, but rather just that oh Jesus is God just like all of these other oh, gods. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, the more you talk with the Christians, then, you know, eventually they'll get to the point where they say, well, there's only one God, and that God is Jesus, and so everybody else is false, right? And that's where problems start to come in. Uh, but this guy, right, trying to, trying to, you know, smooth the waters here, right, he says, right, they're, they're not proclaiming that Artemis is a false goddess, but rather that Jesus is just one, one of the gods. Um, and so he says, right, so they've, they haven't said anything sacrilegious. They haven't blasphemed Artemis, you know, on the face of it. Um, he says, if therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open uh, and there are proconsuls. You know, let them bring charges against one another. Uh, but if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly. Right, so he basically says, if you have specific issues with these men, with these people, we have a system for that. We have courts. We have judges. We, you know, there, there is a proper way to go about airing your grievances. Lawful assembly. Right. And so seek these assemblies. Don't just grab people and, you know, form a mob in, in the theater uh, to try and get these men punished, right? Take them to the courts. Um, this, this is how it should be done. Um, and and right and the the reasoning for this and probably this guy's motivation comes out in verse forty, for we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion, right? So so he's looking at this not as oh someone you know these guys are you know blaspheming against Artemis. He sees this as Rome's going to be mad at me <laughs> if if I let this riot get out of hand. Um, well, because because he's the one because he's the one in charge, right? right? This the, well, this was and this is exactly like what we see with uh, with Pilate, right? At Jesus's crucifixion, 
you know, he eventually gives in to them because he sees that they are ready to riot. They are ready to, you know, they're saying, you know, if you don't do this, you're no friend of Caesar. And, you know, they're, they're beginning to threaten his position of authority. And so he says, fine, I wash my hands, take him. Um, and so this guy, right, he, he's seeing that he's responsible for keeping civic order. He sees that that's not happening. And so let's get this under control because if it, if it gets out of hand even more, uh, I'm going to hear about it. Right, I'm in big trouble. Um, and I'll probably lose my job if not more. Yeah, if um, not my head. Right, and <laughs> and so 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 he says, right, we're in danger of being charged with rioting, and there's no clear cause for this. So let's just stop. Yeah. Um, and they heard these things, and and he dismissed the assembly. Yeah. So so he is he's able to kind of smooth things out, get the crowd to calm down, well, prob probably probably sparing the lives of these Christian men. Yes, that's the um, because these crowds were not happy <laughs> with what, what, what was happening. So, um. But that's interesting <coughs> because Diana, to me, is a woman's name, and then yet the other name. Oh, Artemis. Artemis doesn't sound feminine at all. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Same, same reference to the, the yeah, this female goddess. Um, goddess. Calling her goddess. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. But yeah, so so. Well, that's interesting. So, so more, more trouble around the church yeah. uh, for proclaiming the truth. Um, and that that truth can affect one's beliefs, one's economic situations, you know, lot, lots of things about their lives. So uh, any, any questions about this riot in Ephesus? <laughs> A riot in Ephesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll go ahead and stop there then. Okay. Um, so we'll pick up... Um, next time so so next week i know we're, we're back and forth here um uh, we won't have class this next tuesday oh. um, because we're hosting um another pals retreat um for uh, new pastors out of seminary um and so that lasts until tuesday at noon so um so just long enough to kind of go over this class so so we won't meet this to this next tuesday um but the following tuesday we'll be back so um, so when, when we get there, we'll pick up so we'll in chapter one. 20, Paul in Macedonia and Greece. Barring any large, there will be a snowstorm. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Bar, barring any bad weather, oh, you know. Cold weather. <laughs> so that, so we're talking February. Yes, yeah. Maybe so. by then some of the snow will be gone. Yeah, hopefully, the hopefully. Rain, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Let's get rid of it. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's close with prayer, and then we'll get going. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the way that you preserve your people, uh, that even in the midst of the, the chaos that was that, that riot there in the, the theater of Eph Ephesus, uh, you were able to keep Paul safe uh, by the means of uh, fellow Christians, keeping him out of the, the crowds, uh, and you also kept... Uh, Alexander and, the, and Gaius and the other Christians safe there who were in the crowds uh, by means of, of that, that Roman leader. Uh, we thank you for uh, guarding and protecting us, uh, that you always watch over us and care for us, um, that, that you uh, will ultimately bring us uh, into everlasting life with you. Continue to watch over us and keep us all safe as we um, drive wherever we need to go and any travels, um, keep us and everyone safe um, and that we would uh, continue to have opportunities to live lives that are pleasing to you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody.